is fully uh, network based, it's worked with an Ethernet cable, which means that you can actually use several lemurs at the same time on a computer network to control one computer from several lemurs or the other way around. From one lemur, you can control several applications running on different computers. So from the jazz editor here, I can connect to my lemur, which goes black. And from now on, I can create all these controlling objects that will output control data from my software. So as you can see, the jazz editor software is very is really like your average drawing program. You can instantiate objects, move them around, change the colors, change the position, etc., etc. And everything is mirrored both on the jazz editor and on the lever at the same time. So the user can select any number of these objects to create his controlling layout. So let's say, for example, that I want to create a layout to trigger some notes out of my Pro 53 synthesizer here. Let me just set up the MIDI settings, OK? So to do that, I'm going to create a pad here, make it fairly big, change the color. And now I can hop onto the MIDI tab right here select one of eight possible MIDI destinations. Actually, I'm going to create a whole keyboard by just adding some sub-object like this and map them to a whole octave of notes. This software here runs in the background and converts all, the, all what is coming from the lever into MIDI messages that will get into my MIDI software. There you go. Quite easily, I can just like duplicate this object, put another one here, map it to a different octave, whatsoever. Now, let's say that I would like to control uh, this parameter here is offered by, uh, the, by the Apple Synth for left and right panning. I can just create another object such as a fader that I can put on top of my controller. Let's make this a big horizontal fader, basically like this. I can turn on some options like displaying the name of the fader so that I can actually remember what it's supposed to do in my project. So let's make it a pan fader and assign it to this axis here, which is controller change 10. So I just hop on to this tab, control change 10. So with a limer, you can really easily take advantage of it being a touchscreen based controller by, for instance, I can just teleport the fader by just tapping a position with my finger. Actually, this kind of behavior can all be configured inside the Jazz Editor software. So let's say I want the fader to move much slower. I can bring down the attraction value a bit, and now it will slowly fade in toward the value. All the lemur objects, like the fader, the multiball, the pads, etc., etc., all present a bench of parameters so that you can really tweak the controlling behavior just like you want it to be. So instead of just creating the faders one by one and assigning them, and assigning them by hand, I can just click the Import Module button here and navigate my hard drive to find some clever modules to build my mixer. For instance, I just imported here a classical fader bank 
with mute, solo and arm buttons and 8 feather. And as you can see here, the Limer actually uses the Mackie control protocol here so that live doesn't need any user mapping, it just instantly works. As you can see, if I move my fader in live with the mouse, I get the automation data read back on the limer. functions of life from my controller so I can just import a transport module that I can just move around just like it was an elementary object very easy so I'm going to put it in the bottom right corner here so now I can actually control the transport functions fortunately the camera quality isn't that great but you can see that I have some time cut feedback you have to believe me I'm going to add a last module, which is a pod bar, and it also comes with, an, with a Mackie LCD emulation. So as you can see, right after I import it into my project, I can see all the track names displayed at the top of my layout, plus some rotary encoders emulation that work basically just like rotaries on the classical control surface. So I can control the pan of each my track very easily, get them back into the center using the pad object here. Okay, so now if I look at my live project here, you can see that I have a mini track with a synthesizer extension in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second interface to my Limer project so that I can just swap, swap, flip between the two of them and flip between the mixing the project and triggering some notes out of the absent synthesizer. So what I can do here is click on this button which is create interface. Let's call it synth control. So as you can see, I now have two interfaces, one for mixing and one which is pretty much blank for the moment. I can flip between them with the buttons. So I want to control a synthesizer, so why not just go into my modules and import a master keyboard. Basically the master keyboard was made from a bunch of pad objects very neatly positioned and colored so that it kind of resembled a classical keyboard. So I'm going to use this master keyboard. Actually I don't want it on this interface, I want it in the synth control here. I'm going to position it at the bottom. So I have here the knot triggering and the octave, as well as a pitch bend simulation with some physics on for it to return back to the center, as well as a mod wheel simulation. So as you can see, now I can just trigger some notes out of my synthesizer, trigger the pitch bend.
go back to the mixing interface, change some faders.